I was pretty happy with my original build, but the feedback you left was so good, I couldn't resist incorporating your ideas into what is a much better version. I was still able to meet all of my original design goals, which were, the unit should generally meet or exceed the capabilities of a commercial unit, it should function in providing for most of the conceivable needs we'd have if the grid was down or we needed power someplace too remote for regular AC power. It should store power from multiple sources. It should provide power for most devices. It should have a reasonable weight, that is, my wife should be able to move it without help. It should have a compact footprint so it can be stored without intruding too much on my garage space. And it should be considerably less expensive than similar commercial units. So here's the new build. It incorporates most of the components and all of the attributes of the original and adds the excellent suggestions you left in comments. I posted a complete build list in the description below for you to use as a starting point should you want to build your own unit. Here's the rundown. The heart of the unit is a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter powered by a Group 27 deep cycle marine battery. This unit can supply clean power for all types of devices, including those with inductive loads, meaning motors or compressors, like most types of refrigerators, AC units, or power tools. The original unit used a modified sine wave inverter, which may not be good for things of that sort. After considering the comments, I did a lot of homework on battery selection. A sealed AGM type battery could provide more power storage and could be used on its side, allowing me to stack two or more batteries in the same small footprint. The downside of AGM batteries is that they're both heavy and expensive. Matching the capacity of the battery I selected would make the unit heavier, and the battery would be around three times the price. I stuck with the original battery, as it's nearly the best kind available that fits my design goals. Another benefit of the marine battery is that with regular jumper cables connected to the battery posts, I can add power to the system from an additional car battery. I can also charge the system from a car or truck using the same method. The new inverter also features an excellent digital panel that shows the battery voltage and charge level. It shows the AC voltage, frequency, and most importantly, the wattage of the loads being driven. The inverter has two AC outlets, one of which supplies the power strip, and it has a USB charging port. Finally, the unit has overload and over temperature protection with indicators. The power strip adds six AC outlets and four USB charging ports, so many devices can be used or charged simultaneously. New with this unit is a separate and independent 12 volt system. The panel adds a cigar lighter port for 12 volt devices, two independent USB charging ports, and a battery voltage display, all on their own switch. This gives the unit USB and 12 volt capabilities without the need to power up the inverter. If all you need to do is charge a couple of mobile devices, this will eliminate the power wasted in converting 12 volt power up to 120 volts AC and then back down to 5 volts for the USB. Since both the inverter and the 12 volt system are independently switched, I'll be able to use either system without wasting power on the other. Of course, I have the option to use both at the same time should the need arise. This gives the system a total of 7 120 volt AC outlets seven USB charging ports, two of which are straight from the battery, and one 12 volt cigar lighter port. The unit integrates the same Renogy charge controller as before, allowing up to four 100 watt solar panels to power the inverter and charge the battery. The charge controller is part of the Renogy solar kit that has two 100 watt panels, the controller, and most of the wiring needed for the solar side of the generator. I added a 10 gauge quick disconnect and a 30 amp fuse to the solar panel harness. Builders note, when you incorporate a quick disconnect, it's good practice to have the exposed red connector on the charge controller side of the connection. I also incorporated the same trickle charger so the battery will always have a full charge when it's needed. Taking more of your suggestions, I added a fuse block so all the circuits are fully protected. The block has fuses for the charge controller, the trickle charger, the 12 volt cigar lighter port, and the 12 volt USB system. This will protect the system against short circuits or overloads. Finally, I'm adding boots to cover the battery terminals, so any metal that may fall onto the battery will not short across the battery itself. As before, the entire unit is built onto a heavy-duty hand truck with large tires. This gives the unit easy mobility even over rough ground and a very compact footprint for storage. It can be moved easily by one person. Should it need to be transported, the battery can be disconnected in a minute, splitting the weight and making it possible to put the main unit in any orientation while keeping the battery upright to prevent leaking. A friend welded angle brackets to the platform to form a battery box complete with diamond mesh and a rubber pad to allow drainage. Now for performance. I think one of the most popular comparable units would be the Goal Zero Yeti 1250. That unit specs out to 1250 watts with a 100 amp hour reserve. That means it can handle loads of up to 1250 watts and is rated to carry a 25 amp load, roughly 300 watts, for about 4 hours before the battery hits 50% capacity. 
The 50% value matters because discharges below this value will reduce the battery's capacity and shorten its service life. My unit is rated at 2000 watts with a 95 amp hour reserve, so it can handle the same 300 watt load for just a little less than 4 hours. To get a better sense of what this means, my unit could power a box fan for 6 hours, an LCTV for about 12 hours, a very small fridge for 40 hours, and a hair dryer for about 45 minutes. The higher wattage rating means my unit can, if necessary, handle high load appliances like a hair dryer or coffee maker, or the starting load of motorized appliances like large fridges or AC units. So let's review costs. Looking at a good ready to buy alternative, the Yeti 1400 portable power station kit includes the Yeti 1400 unit and two 100 watt solar panels. Add the optional cart and you're just over $2,500. The total build cost for my unit was $774.60, less than one third of the price. It's not as compact or not nearly as pretty, but it does the same job with 40% more wattage, albeit with a smaller power reserve, and is much more convenient to move. As for price, the revised version is about $80 more than the original unit. Again, I've posted the complete build list in the description below, in case you'd like to use this as a starting point for building your own solar generator. So what do you think? What would you do differently? Post your comments below. The comments made on the original video were terrific and inspired me to build a much improved version. I'm always delighted to hear from you. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you'll know when another video comes out.